Ms Elliot Colburn. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and it's a pleasure to follow the Honourable Member for Basing, the Right Honourable Member for Basingstoke, uh, and to speak in such an important debate. And in doing so, I want to begin by thanking the armed services community in Carshall and Wallington. Uh, we often speak in this place about the importance um, and the gratitude, the debt of gratitude that we owe to our armed forces, uh, to the honour to honour the bravery and the sacrifice of those men and women uh, who fought for the peace and freedoms we enjoy today. Uh, and in my short contribution, I want to take a look at one of the areas where I think that we can begin to repay that debt of gratitude, gratitude which is in the realm of mental health support. Uh, and in doing so, I want to remember a very special man, uh, my grandfather, Derek Hayton, who is sadly no longer with us and didn't live to see me elected to this place. Uh, but my granddad, Derek, was devoted to Queen and Country and was keen to sign up. Uh, as a member of the armed forces and I'll never forget the story he used to tell us me, my brothers and I when we were younger uh, of the day that he signed up to become a member of the army uh, on arrival at the recruitment center he was asked a number of personal questions um, and was told all of a sudden to take a walk and to have a think about what he's just said and then to come back and he did so and it wasn't until it's, uh, it wasn't until he thought about the question he had been answering when he had been interrupted and asked to leave it was about his age he was too young. And like so many others during that time, he went back and made himself a little bit older so that he could join and serve the country that he loved. And indeed he did so during the Korean War. Uh, after leaving the army soon after the Korean War, he served out the rest of his working life in the Metropolitan Police. Uh, but he never lost his passion for the armed forces. And to his dying day, uh, spent his free time researching and taking part uh, in anything to do with his favourite regiment, which was the Historic Rifle Brigade. My granddad Eric always had stories to tell about the armed forces, but it wasn't until I was older that I realised that he very rarely, if ever, spoke about his own time in the, arm, in the army. And later my mum explained why. Because my grandfather, like so many others, to those of us who have never served, can scarcely imagine. He had experienced true horrors and seen such horrific scenes that he lived with those mental scars for the rest of his life. And of course, in those days, there was very little, if any, in the way of mental health support for our veterans. Which is why I am so proud that this government does stand firm by the Armed Forces Covenant, because it does state that priority treatment should be given to veterans. And I'm proud, as someone who used to work in the National Health Service, that in 2015, the NHS updated its, const its constitution to ensure that it reflected this responsibility as well. Indeed, NHS expenditure for veterans' mental health has nearly doubled in the last four years alone. In December 2018, NHS England announced an extra £10 million for a dedicated crisis service for veterans. This extra funding would also enable the rollout of, of the first ever veteran-friendly GP surgeries and hospitals. And I welcome that in the 2020 spring budget, the government announced a further £10 million for the Armed Forces Covenant Fund Trust to support projects that support veterans' mental health. We can never really express in words just the debt of gratitude we owe our veterans and to people like my granddad Derek, but we can make up for it in the actions that we take and making sure that we are there for them. Yeah. 